Assalamu alaikum YouTube viewers. The topic of today's video is the Dubai Huckel on Sager equation. So in this video, I'm going to derive the Dubai Huckel on Sager equation. So first of all, according to Dubai Huckel theory of strong electrolytes, okay, according to Dubai Huckel theory of strong electrolytes, each ion is surrounded by the ionic atmosphere of opposite charge. So if I have a positive charge at the center, then it is surrounded by negative charges. Okay, as you can see here that in this beaker, I have a positive charge at the center and it is surrounded by negative charges around it. Okay. So the next thing is that a moving ion is surrounded by an ionic atmosphere of opposite charge unsymmetrically. Okay. So if I have a positive charge, as you know that if I have two electrodes, okay, in a beaker and the beaker contains the electrolyte and these two electrodes are connected with the battery, the positive terminal of the battery and negative terminal of the battery. Okay. And this negative terminal, this negative terminal is attached to this electrode and this positive charge will be attracted towards this negative electrode. Okay. And if this positive charge, this positive charge is going through the electrolyte. Okay. This positive charge is going through the electrolyte and the electrolyte contains the negative ions. Okay. And these negative ions are moving towards this positive electrode. Okay. Let me just repeat it again that the electrolyte consists of positive and negative ion. This positive ion is moving towards this negative electrode, whereas these negative ions are moving towards the positive electrode. So for an instance, if I consider a positive charge, the positive charge is surrounded by the atmosphere of negative ions. Okay. There will be more negative ions ions uh, at the back at the back side there will be more negative ions whereas there will be less uh, negative ions at the front side of this positive charge okay so i can say that this results in decreased speed since this positive charge will be attracted by these negative charges so this results in a decreased speed and decreased conductance okay so this is known as the asymmetric or relax relaxation effect okay so this is known as the asymmetric or relaxation effect so Another effect is that viscous resistance of solvent also acts. Okay. So our electrolyte is dissolved in a solvent. For example, our electrolyte is dissolved in water. Okay. So when our electrolyte is dissolved in water, the there will be some viscous resistance of the solvent that will be affect that will affect on the positive charge that is moving towards this negative electrode. Okay. This positive charge that is moving towards the negative electrode will face viscous resistance from the solvent. So this effect is known as the electrophoretic effect. Okay. How will it face the viscous resistance? The positive charge will collide with the solvent molecules or will be attracted by the solvent molecules. And there will be a lot of uh, things that will decrease the movement of the positive charge towards the negative electrode by the solvent. Okay. So the next thing we have is that Debye and Huckel made an attempt to calculate the magnitude of process which opposes the motion. So what did Debye and Huckel do? Debye and Huckel made an attempt. Okay. They attempted to calculate the magnitude of the process which opposes the motion. Oppose the motion of what? Oppose the motion of this positive charge for going towards the electrode. Okay. So what did they do? They just calculated the magnitude of the process which opposes the motion. Okay. So while calculating what did they do? They neglected the Brownian motion. First of all, they neglected the Brownian motion. And another thing what did they do was the considered, they considered the ions to be moving in straight lines. Okay. They neglected the Brownian motion and they considered the ions to be moving in the straight line. So this theory was improved by the Onsager who took the Brownian motion into account. Okay. The Brownian motion was not used by Debye and Huckel, but Onsager used the Brownian motion in his equation. Okay. So by using the Stokes law, the electrophoretic force is given by this. Okay. You know the electrophoretic force. What is the electrophoretic force? The electrophoretic force is this. Viscous resistance of solvent also acts. It is called the electrophoretic effect. The electrophoretic effect, the electrophoretic force is actually the resistance force due to the solvent. Okay. So electrophoretic force is given by Stroke's law by this formula. Okay. Where E here is the charge and Zi is the valence. This K, the small K is the reciprocal of thickness. And again, the large K is the coefficient of friction resistance. Large K or copper is the coefficient of frictional resistance and V here is the applied potential gradient, pi is the uh, pi and eta here is the viscosity. Okay. So moving on, according to Onsager, relaxation force. So relaxation force is given by E cube, epsilon cube, zik over 6 dkt omega v. Okay. Here, as you know, that d is the dielectric constant and this omega is given by the formula z positive z negative 2q over 1 plus under root q. Okay. So this is the value for this omega here. 
Okay, so next, the driving force acting on the other. So up till now, what we have done, we have just uh, written the formulas for two forces, the relaxation force and the electrophoretic force. And the third force here is the driving force of the ion, the driving force of the ion, the force that is driving the ion through the solvent towards the negative electrode. Okay, the force that is driving this ion through the electrolyte towards this electrode is the driving force. Okay, so this driving force is given by EZIV. Okay. So the next thing we have is the frictional force is given by frictional force is equal to K I U I. Okay, here U I is the speed. Okay, and K I the K is the similar constant that we have used before. Okay, the similar constant that we have used before here. Okay, K I what was K? K is the coefficient of frictional resistance. Okay, so now moving on. So frictional force is given by K I U I. Okay, so my driving force should be equal to the sum of the frictional force, the relaxation force, and that of the electrophoretic force. Okay, my driving force. Let me just change the marker. That my driving force should be equal to frictional force. Frictional force plus the relaxation force and that of the electrophoretic force. So friction force plus electrophoretic force, electrophoretic force and the last one is my relaxation force, relaxation force. Okay, so now I'm going to just plug in these values, driving force, driving force has a value E Z I V. E Z I V is equal to frictional force. The frictional force has the value K I U I. So here is my K I U I plus electrophoretic force. The electrophoretic force has a value, as you can see here, the electrophoretic force is E Z I K K I V. So I'm going to just plug in this value. E Z I K and divided by six by eta and the next thing I had was K I V okay and now in place of relaxation force I'm going to write this part here in the this is the relaxation force okay so I'm going to write it here so now writing the value for relaxation force the relaxation force has the value E Q Z I K divided by 6 D K T into omega v okay <clears throat> so that was the formula so now moving on we have to divide this whole equation by k i v okay dividing by k i v so if i divide this whole equation by k i v then it becomes e z i v divided by k i v is equal to K I U I divided by K I V plus E Z I K divided by 6 pi eta K I V divided by K I V okay and again plus E Q Z I K divided by 6 D K T omega V this k is larger k okay uh, so and i also have to divide it by ai v so now here as you can see that this k i will cancel down with this one this v will cancel down with this one and again i will have this k i v will cancel out with this k i v this v will cancel out with this v okay so what i'm left with is e z i over k i is equal to u i over v plus e z i k divided by 6 pi eta plus e q z i k divided by 6 d k g omega over k i okay so now i'm going to rearrange this equation i'm going to find the value for uiv okay find the value for uiv this whole part will go here so i get ui divided by v is equal to ezi divided by ki minus ezi k divided by 6 pi eta minus eq zi 
k divided by 6 d k t omega over k i. Okay, so now what I am going to do, I am just going to multiply whole of this equation by v. Okay, multiplying by v. Multiplying by v on both sides. On both sides. So if I multiply by v on both sides, then v multiply u i by v is equal to v e z i over k i. Okay. So if I multiply v uh, here, I am going to just take the common. Okay. V is being multiplied by whole of this part. Z i k over 6 pi eta minus and taking minus common, this becomes plus. Okay. E z i k over 6 d k t omega over k i. So what I've just done here is if I'm going to multiply the v on both sides of the equation, multiplying v here and multiplying v here, v is multiplied by this this part of the equation, v is also multiplied by this part and this part. So what I've done next is I've just taken v as common. Okay, I've just taken v as common from this and this part. Okay, and I'll also have taken minus common. So taking minus common, this minus becomes positive. Okay. Here, so taking one e common, I am left with e square here. Okay. So now moving on, as you know that I have um, 1 volt equal to if I have the 1 volt per centimeter then it should be equal to 1 over 300 ESU okay 1 volt per centimeter is equal to 1, 1 over 300 ESU okay so this is the potential gradient so I'm just now going to plug in the value for potential gradient 1 over 300 so in place of V I'm going to write 1 over 300 ESU again in place of V I'm going to write 1 over 3 1 over 300 no. u i is equal to e z i by k i 300 okay again minus e k over 300 and the next thing i have is z i over 6 i eta plus e square z i over 6 d k t omega k i okay so if you know that if we have an infinite infinite dilution okay if we have infinite dilution at infinite dilution the value of k becomes equal to zero the value of k becomes zero at the infinite dilution so this part of the equation becomes equals to zero so we are left with only u i is equal to e z i over k i 300 okay so i can write it as so now uh, as you can see that but you know that u i naught f is equal to lambda i naught okay uh, you know that the u i naught f is equal to lambda i naught so using this i can find the value for u i naught so u i naught should be equal to lambda i naught over f okay lambda i naught over f so hence now i'm going to plug in this value for u and naught here so plugging in this value for u and naught here this becomes lambda i naught by f is equal to e z i over 300 k i okay so this k is a bigger k okay so now since as you know that the ions behave independently at infinite dilution the ions behave independently at infinite dilution therefore the ionic conductance at the infinite dilution can be written according to the Kolmogorov law okay and uh, you know according to the Kolmogorov law that lambda positive naught is equal to f u positive naught okay so this is according to according to Kohl Roche's law lambda positive naught is equal to f u positive naught and again lambda negative naught is equal to f u negative naught okay so again we know that we have an electrolyte okay we have an electrolyte so we know that u i is equal to lambda i over alpha f okay so if i say that my electrolyte is completely dissociated is completely ionized so i can take alpha is equal to one okay so first of all i'm going to plug in this value uh, back in the equation back in the starting equation here okay i'm going to plug in this value here again so plugging in this value here i get in place of ui i'm going to write in place of ui i'm going to write lambda i over alpha f lambda i over alpha f and then again in place of ezi over 300k i'm going to write lambda i naught over f okay i'm going to write lambda i naught over f in, in place of this so i'm going to write lambda i naught over f again i have minus 
e k over 300 and then z i over 6 pi beta plus d squared z i over 6 d a d omega over k i okay so now when the electrolyte is fully dissociated you can neglect this alpha because alpha is equal to 1 okay lambda i naught okay this alpha is we have taken alpha equal to 1 because electrolyte is fully ionized electrolyte is fully ionized lambda i on the left hand side and this f is being multiplied whole of this part when f is being multiplied by this f cancels with this whereas i'm left with this f here first of all i'm going to write it like this multiply lambda i naught over f minus f e k over 300 and then i have z i over 6 pi eta plus e square z i over 6 d k t omega over k i okay the next thing is this f will cancel out with this one okay and i am left with the final equation here and other equation here lambda i is equal to lambda i naught minus e k over 300 z i over 6 pi eta plus e squared z i over 6 d k t omega over k i okay so now as you know that lambda i naught over f is equal to e z i over 300 k okay from this equation lambda i naught over f is equal to e z i over 300 k so just plugging this value e z i over 300 k i so now i am going to find the value for lambda i naught 300 k i okay this value for just cross multiplying this i will get lambda i naught 300 k i is equal to e z i f okay so so now what i have done here i have just taken this equation again lambda i naught is equal to e z i over 300 k i from where i have taken this equation this equation i have taken from here this equation lambda i naught is equal to e z i over 300 k i i have just taken this equation again down here so i have just taken this equation again and now i have cross multiplied it cross multiplying 300 k i will go here so lambda i naught will be 300 k i and f is uh, gone here so f is gone here okay so the next thing i am going to do is i am going to plug in the value in this equation okay as you can see here what i have here is e square z i okay and this f is being multiplied by whole of this part okay so when this f is being multiplied whole of this part what i'm getting is um just let me use the next page so now here i have just written the equation again and again as you can see here that this was the equation that i have just written on the next page here so now i'm going to just plug in three lambda i naught 300 ki is equal to e z i f okay so i'm now going to plug in this value here so i'll have lambda i is equal to lambda i naught minus e k divided by 300 and then i have z i f divided by 6 pi eta and then in place of e z i f i am going to write 300 lambda i naught okay i am going to write 300 lambda i naught and then again i have here is k i okay so here i am going to write also a k i and there is one e remaining and then i have 6 d k t omega over k i okay so this k i will cancel out with this one okay so what i'm left with again is lambda i is equal to lambda i naught minus e k over 300 and then i have z i f over 6 pi eta again plus and then i have e 300 300 e lambda i naught divided by this is actually 300 let me just put it again 300 and 6 d k t omega okay so this is i'm left with the equation now i'm going to plug in the value for k the value of k you know the value of k from the debye heckel theory the value of k is uh, what i'm going to plug in now lambda i naught minus e over 300 and the value of k here is 4 pi e square divided by d k t summation i n i z i square 1 by 2 and then I am going to write the remaining rest of the equation. The rest of the equation is z i f over 6 pi eta plus 300 e lambda i over 6 d k t 6 d k t. Now as you know the value for n i the value for n i here is c i n over 
1000 so now i'm going to plug in this value in place of ni so i get lambda i is equal to lambda i naught minus e over 300 and then 4 pi epsilon square d k t and then now in place of ni what i'm going to write is c i uh, c i n over 1000 so here is my n and here is my 1000 and in place of ni i'm going to write c i z i square and again the rest, rest of the equation is just the same okay z i f over c and the next thing is eta here and then i have plus 300 epsilon lambda i over 6 d k t omega okay oh, and this is my actually the space was less okay so now uh, now i'm going to plug in the value for the constant k as you know the value for constant k is 1.38 into 10 to the power minus 16 per per degree okay and the uh, value for e the value of e is 4.802 into 10 to the power minus 10 csu and the value of n is 6.025 into 10 to the power 23 okay so now i'm going to plug in all of these values here in the equation so now i have lambda i is equal to lambda i naught minus So what I've done here, I've just multiplied whole of this part and plugged in these values so I get these answers, okay. So then I have just taken this part as common, this part and this part as common, okay. So as you know for 1 ratio 1 electrolyte, for 1 ratio 1 electrolyte, I have C is equal to C positive plus C negative, okay. Or I can say that Z i is equal to z positive plus z negative so now i'm going to just plug in the values again i have lambda i lambda i naught minus 29.15 and in place of z i i'm going to write z positive minus z negative z positive plus z negative and in place here dt half eta and plus 9.9 .9 into 10 to the power 5 divided by dt 3 by 2 lambda i naught omega <clears throat> okay and then in place of this i am going to plug in the value c positive c positive square minus plus c negative z negative square and then i have 1 by 2 okay so now i am going to move on as you can see the quantity the quantity c positive and c negative represents the concentration of ions in moles per liter okay this c positive and this c negative rep represents the concentration of ions in moles per liter then may be replaced by the corresponding constant c in equivalent per liter so i can just replace it by c okay if i replace it by c then taking c i can write it as lambda i lambda i naught minus I have just replaced C positive and C negative by a single C that is the equivalent concentration. I have just taken it out. Okay, and I can write it as under root C. Okay. The rest of the equation is the same. Okay, so now I am going to write it write the equation here again. So for one ratio one electrolyte, for one ratio one electrolyte, for one ratio one electrolyte, I have Z positive is equal to z negative is equal to 1 okay so i can take z positive and z negative to be equal to 1 so just plugging in the values okay so if i have just taken the equivalent conductance of an electrolyte the equivalent conductance of an electrolyte is equal to the sum of the conductance of constituents under root 1 square plus 1 square okay this z positive is 1 and this z negative is 1 so i have 1 square plus 1 square Okay, I have 1 square plus 1 square and 1 square plus 1 square becomes 2 and I have 2 under root 2, I have under root 2, okay, under root C, I have 1 plus 1, 2, raised to power 1 by 2, okay, so I can write it as, okay, so now, when this, here actually there was under root C, okay, so after multiplying this under root 2 and this 2 minus under root with this and this under root 2 with whole of this, I get an answer 82.4 divided by dt 1 by 2 eta plus and multiplying this part with this and this here, I get 8.2 into 10 to the power 5 divided by dt 3 by 2 
then the not okay and then I'm left with here under root C only under root C okay so I can write it as lambda not is equal to I can write it as lambda not minus a plus b in the not under root c okay where a is this and b is this value okay okay so this represents the forms of debye huckel on sager conductors equation okay so this here is the debye huckel on sager conductors equation so that was all for today's video inshallah see you in the next video in which i will describe the validity of debye huckel on sager equation okay so if you have any question you can ask in comment